Hello there again. We're continuing our AGRC 219 Ag Finance video lecture series. And this is Unit 12. We're going to talk land and its control and use and get into some of the key parts of what goes on with uh, should you buy land or rent land. And we'll talk about some of the concepts in between. So objectives here, I'll let you pause the video if you so choose and, and read the uh, things that we hope to accomplish in this particular section. Um, but really quickly, let's move on and get to the content in order to keep this video good and short. So here's a chart uh, over time. This is United States, comes from the United States Department of Agriculture, National Agricultural Statistics Service. This is average land value, cropland value in the U.S. over the last uh, basically 15 years. So, and you'll notice it's stabilized, let's say, the, for the last five, which is kind of interesting because we typically talk about land values going up. And uh, if you go find some older charts, you'll actually see, if you get back to around 1900, you would see this line graph uh, dip all the way down below that $500 mark uh, when you when you uh, had the opportunity to purchase land uh, way, way back uh, prior to the Great Depression even. so. Um, but I would imagine for most of us around here in this southern Illinois area or some of you that uh, maybe have heard uh, greater... Uh, richer parts of the farm, farming uh, belt uh, might say $4,100 an acre, how much can I buy? And some of you in uh, areas that that um, maybe don't have quite as good quality of dirt, that sounds maybe even on the high side. So, But that's average farmland value across the U.S. Let's drill down and look at something a little bit more uh, broke out by state. Again, also comes from the NASS on USDA's site. And so you can look at state by state data. And if you look at Illinois, uh, we're there at, uh, you know, $7,400 an acre, which is an increase of about 1.6%. This is 2020 data, I believe. So the most, most recent uh, recent data. And uh, Iowa, you know, $7,070 an acre. So uh, Illinois, you know, at least in the Corn Belt anyway, leading the way in terms of average farmland value. You get into uh, Missouri, about $3,400 an acre. Uh, but look out at California, $10,000 an acre. And very, very expensive to buy farmland uh, in the state of California. So, but uh, nonetheless, a pretty interesting uh, map to kind of look at and see what farmland values are doing across the country. So let's talk about land ownership. And of course, uh, here's some here's some advantages of you know, if you want to get in on your own land, of course, security of tenure, you know, if you own land, you're going to be there as long as you so choose. Uh, eventually, you know, once you get enough equity, you can use it as loan collateral to buy more land. Uh, as long as you're, you know, responsible in making payments, you get to do pretty much whatever you want with that land. Since you own it, you can manage it as you see fit. Uh, if that means making improvements to it, like drainage or uh, irrigation or fencing or building on it, you know, whatever you want to do, it's you're free to do with it however you like. And number four talks about hedge against inflation. And that's kind of an interesting little concept here. You say, well, what, is, what does that mean? Actually, when you have the opportunity to purchase land, for the most part, and if you go back a couple slides to that chart on uh, U.S. land values, you almost never see land go down in value, or at least not for very long. Even in the struggling economic times that we've had here, let's say the past five years, we're kind of in one of those uh, valleys in terms of um, crop price and economic health of the agricultural industry, um, probably preparing for an upswing again soon, because that's typically how it works in cycles. Um, that means land value will go back up. And if you look at a 100-year chart of land values, there are almost no dips in land value. So when you have the opportunity to buy land, you can probably understand that you're hedging that it's probably going to go up in value. So if you get a deal, uh, it's probably going to go up. It's not going to be any cheaper. So that's that's what hedge against inflation means. And I'll tell you a quick story that my grandfather always related to me that he and my grandmother had the opportunity. They were closing on uh, an 80 acre piece of property that still sits on our home farm. And he shared with me that when they went, he and his wife went to closing, my grandmother went to closing, uh, the banker offered them 
another 80 acre piece, literally a half a mile away from the piece that sits on our home farm and offered it to him at $100 an acre. Now, mind you, we're going back um, probably 80 years or so. Uh, and first they were shocked. And second, they just thought, wow, $100 an acre, that's a pretty good deal, but man, that's expensive. We're just signing on for this current 80. Uh, we were planning on buying 80, not 160. And so they said no and walked away. And man, imagine what that uh, $100 investment per acre on that 80 acres would be worth in today's dollars. So uh, that's what I mean by hedge against inflation. He oftentimes laughed and told me that might have been the dumbest thing that he ever uh, passed on. So um, kind of an interesting side note, personal story. But uh, but of course, when you own land, you got a great deal of pride in the fact that you do get, get in fact, to own it. Now, of course, there's some disadvantages that, going, that goes with owning land. Uh, it creates a, a pretty good cash flow crunch. I mean, it, it's going to be expensive to make those land payments uh, on an annual basis, uh, unless you can really pop in a pretty good down payment on on that mortgage. Uh, lower return on your capital for some period of time until you get into a better cash flow and equity position. So you'll probably be working with less capital for some period of time. And that may, in fact, over time, uh, it may limit your size growth. It may limit your rate of growth if you're trying to grow aggressively. So you have to be aware that there are there are some um, things that are speed bumps or hurdles that you have to cover uh, if you choose to own land and, and, and go into that amount of, of capital investment. So, of course, the other advantage is you lease or rent land. And some advantages to that is it frees up your working capital, opposite of what we just talked about. Um, you know, it, it provides you some maybe uh, additional management opportunities because you're not so tied up. You can be quite flexible in terms of size. If you uh, can find 40 acres to rent, you don't have to be confined to what's available for sale. And so therefore it makes you a lot more flexible financially. So there's some pretty sizable advantages um, occasionally to leasing land and should be considered when the opportunity presents itself. So what's the disadvantages of lease or, or renting land? Of course, there's uncertainty. It's very difficult to know sometimes uh, how long you will have the opportunity to rent land. Is that is that landlord going to eventually sell the land? Uh, will they make it available for rent to the highest bidder? Uh, then you get into a competitive situation. There's some struggles with some uncertainty there unless you have a contract and, and even in those cases, sometimes those are difficult to nail down. Occasionally you have poor facilities and I found a picture to drop in here. Maybe you would be renting this for the facilities and you wouldn't be so pleased uh, with those facilities. And so, and sometimes you're roadblocked in terms of the improvements that you can make because the landlord, you know, just doesn't agree with, with uh, more investment. And then finally, just very slow equity accumulation. It takes a long time to, to grow your net worth whenever you are paying out money in rent that really has no value to you um, on a, on a personal basis. So let's compare, uh, think about what, what would be the steps in making a land buying decision. Let's assume for a minute that 40 acres was coming up for sale within a mile of your home farm. What would you need to know? What would you need to consider? Well, first, of course, the quality of the soil, the topography and the climate that is there. Um, you know, certainly if it's a mile from a mile from your home, you're going to know that pretty well. Uh, occasionally you have the opportunity to buy land in a much different uh, area, but you need to do a very, really good investment in, uh, or investigation into what that soil is like and its productivity level. Uh, are there buildings and improvements there? Does it match your size goals, the market availability, and things of that nature that are here? Uh, location is kind of an inter interesting thing to talk about. You know, it's certainly changed in my lifetime how far away producers are willing to drive equipment in order to farm. It's it's very different now than it was uh, whenever I was a kid. Um, so there's a, a, a lot of different things here that are steps that you should consider, you know, factors in the decision making process. And I can't stress enough the bottom right hand one, which is a, a financial feasibility analysis. Utilize some of the tools that we've been talking about through this course and really, really push the numbers to it and try and determine um, Will this cash flow if I enter into this agreement? Uh, you can get it caught up into the excitement of buying land and, and the fact that it's maybe close to home or 
or you're going to grow your operation and, and get emotional about it and not make a good sound business decision. And you still have to do that. That's still very important. So do a really good financial feasibility analysis. Okay, let's talk about if you chose to lease, you know, what are the keys to cash rent? You know, first, it'd be nice to keep it simple as you can. Um, you know, find out what kind of managerial freedom do you have? What what are you going to be allowed to do by the landlord and what will not be allowed? Um, you know, try and figure out what your risk is going to be, what capital requirements and you, you're, you are going to be expected to invest. Um, understand the tax implications that go into both for you and the landlord. Uh, that's That should be a, a partnership relationship, essentially that uh, that you want to be looking out not only for your best interest, but theirs. So the common question is, what is cash rent worth? Uh, this is, I believe, uh, 2019 data. And uh, if I can hover across over here, you follow my mouse. And here's Clinton County, Illinois, uh, average cash rent at, at $158 an acre, Washington County at 139, Marion County at uh, 153, uh, get up in here to Fayette County at 163, Bond County at 171. Uh, then you get into some of the Metro East counties, goes up a little bit more, Madison and St. Clair County here. And then of course, you look into the heartland of high corn yield country approaching that $300 an acre uh, in central Illinois. So kind of interesting to consider the range of cash rents that are out there. And so, and those are averages uh, reported again by USDA. So good, good numbers to know. So what's fair? Um, so here's a couple different uh, options you could do. And, and the first, uh, first one here is essentially a, uh, a formula. So you take landowner cost, subtract current market value, add oppor opportunity costs for similar investment. That you can come upon a cash rent number there. Um, you can do a tenant's residual, which for the tenant, of course, doesn't look to be a, a too profitable investment because it leaves you really no net return. Um, you can do a crop share equivalent. You can agree upon uh, how much you're going to split in terms of the crop or a share of the gross income. Or you could do something similar uh, or different that I didn't even list here, which is just, you know, what's the county average and take that. Um, so there's there's several different ways to approach cash rent and what is fair, but it's important to talk openly and honestly uh, with your landlord and when you establish those th kinds of uh, opportunities. Of course, there's always the occasion where you have a cash rent that is a sealed bid type of setup. And if you know that you're entering into a competitive bid situation, do your homework, understand the soil just as if you were buying it and what its productivity levels are so that you can build your competitive cash rent bid. Next is share crop leases and some things to consider here if you're going to share crop is uh, risk and the capital requirements that are there, who's going to pay for what and to what level and kind of back to the old third and two thirds amount uh, that's been very common over the years and, and crop share has kind of been replaced a lot by, by cash rent and there's quite a lot less share cropping than, than what used to occur. So as we wrap up this section here, some of the take home messages that I want you to uh, think about and consider carefully is what is the what are the advantages of ownership of land versus the opportunities presented by renting land? And you really have to financially weigh those things out because there's two very different things and they can bring two very different things to your operation. And you're probably going to use both. Uh, when you talk about your farming business or those of you who work on the retail and service side of agriculture, advise producers on what their opportunities are for both. I appreciate you tuning into this lecture. We'll be looking forward to uh, an activity to assess your knowledge of this um, content area here in this section. I look forward to seeing you in class. Thanks again for tuning in.